In this video, we're going to finish moving all the game data into XML files. It will be a quick video because it's what we've done for our other videos. This is just for the quest, trader, and recipe data. We'll start out by adding three new files to the game data folder, which are the quest XML, recipes XML, and traders XML. Here's a quick look at the quest XML file. Notice I've used the C data around the name and the description, so that way if we have any special XML characters in there, we don't have to worry about it. In the recipes XML, we've got our recipe and what ingredients go into it, what items get output. And in our traders XML, we've got our trader and their inventory. Notice that we've added a new ID attribute for the trader because I'm going to switch the program to use an ID for traders instead of using the name. That way it's just more consistent with all the other game objects. When you add these XML files to the game data folder, remember to set the build action to none and copy to output directory to copy always. Next, we'll go into the trader class and add the ID property. And I will also add a ID parameter to pass into the constructor where we set the passed in value to the property value. The third step is to go into the different factory classes, the quest factory, recipe factory, and trader factory, and modify them with, like we did for all the other game objects. We'll have the game data file name. We'll have our list of quest recipes or traders. We'll check to see if the game data file exists. If so, we'll load it into an XML document and then parse the data to fill in the quest recipe or trader list variable. And inside the node parsing function, we'll do the same type of thing we did before, where we read the node values and populate some object and add that to our private list. When we get to the trader factory, we're going to make one other change. The get trader by name function, we're going to change to get trader by ID, since now we have a trader ID to retrieve the trader. Because we're adding the trader ID and that's how we're going to retrieve it, we need to go into the locations XML file and on lines 11, 18, and 37, where we used to say trader name equals whatever, we need to change that to trader ID equals and then the ID for that particular trader. And finally, we'll need to go into the world factory where we actually create the locations. When we add the traders to the locations in the world factory class, we need to call the trader factory get trader by ID now instead of by name and pass in the ID attribute, which it's now getting from the location XML file where we change it from ID to name. After making the changes, we'll start the game. We see here's our recipe. We don't see any quest yet. So let's move up to a location with a quest. It shows up in the quest tab and we see that it has the proper name and information about the quest. If we go into our recipes and try to craft a granola bar, we should see our granola bar inventory increase by one and our oats, honey, and raisins decrease. So we'll check that that still works. It still does. And we'll go to a location with a trader, hit trade, and here we see we've got the trader's name and the trader's inventory. So it looks like this all works. The next couple of videos are going to be some of the miscellaneous cleanup and bug fixes. Some people have noticed a couple of bugs and a couple of areas that could be improved. Plus there's some miscellaneous things that people would like to see added to the game. And I think now we're at kind of a stable place so we can start doing that. We can start adding those features in. I'll organize those because there's about six or seven of them that I want to get done but I don't want to do an individual video for each one, so we'll try to get them together into just a couple of videos. There will be a link beneath the YouTube video to the support page. Please go there if you want to get the source code or if you have any questions. 